whenever my paintings don't turn out, I have a giant pile that I toss them into. So here's my, my pile of failed paintings. And it's so tempting when you're on social media, when you have other artists that you look up to, that you think they must not have these struggles too. Because all you're seeing is their finished work. You're seeing the, the polished version of them on social media. The reality is every one of these artists has had hundreds if not thousands of failed paintings along the way. Another thing you might not realize is they still fail. Some of the best artists that I know, they still fail because if you're not failing, you're not pushing yourself, you're not growing. So today we're gonna to talk about what to do when your painting fails. Why is it important to learn how to deal with failing? Well, as an artist, as someone who's learning a craft, failing is a big part of that growth process. One of the big problems with social media is that you're always seeing the polished, finished result of someone's hard work. But what you're not seeing is all the struggle along the way. And what that does is it makes us think that other people might not struggle in the same way that we do. When that painting doesn't turn out, or when a painting turns out really well and then, and then the next one doesn't turn out, how do we handle that? How do you keep showing up when you're frustrated or you're struggling or you're thinking about giving up? When you first finish a painting, it's not the best time to decide whether the painting was successful or not. Watercolor is very mentally taxing. Creating for a long period of time is very mentally taxing. But watercolor especially, there's not a lot of ways to correct your painting as far as like scraping it out or um, ways of correcting oil or acrylic or covering over things that you can do in other mediums. And so because that's the nature of the medium, typically in the way that I paint, I, I'm mainly painting in one go. And when I finish, I've been working or thinking through things for a couple hours or maybe more, depending on the subject. At the end of my painting is not the best time to decide whether my painting was successful or not. And I, I remember Andy Evenson saying he, he likes to get his paintings to about 90% and then he likes to step away and maybe come back a few hours later or come back the next day even and decide what finishing touches the painting might need or decide that the painting's finished. And so waiting until this happens is a good way to give yourself a little bit of distance between what you've created and deciding whether it's good or not. And so take a little break, uh, uh, maybe you're waiting a couple hours, maybe you come back the next day, and then do an honest assessment of your painting. And so if you haven't seen my video on uh, doing a self critique of your work. Um, you can follow that link and check out that video. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can scroll through and find it. Learning to assess our work honestly is very valuable. So take a little break, come back, give your work an honest assessment. So the next thing I want to talk about isn't something that can happen overnight. But as artists, we need to learn to separate the value that we give ourselves as people, as artists, from the outcome of a specific uh, painting. Don't hang too much self-worth on the results of a painting, whether it's positive or negative. So don't get too high or too low with the results of your painting. And this is something that you have to learn over time. That, like anything, this is a muscle that you need to strengthen. If you First of all, I think becoming more aware of how of the messages that you tell yourself and how you treat yourself and recognizing patterns in I finished this painting, I post this painting, I feel this way um, about myself, about my creative practice. We need to learn to separate the result from the self-worth that we give ourselves. And I think one way of doing this is creating a practice calendar. And so instead of attaching so much self-worth to the end result, we need to move that attachment to consistency. Am I consistently showing up? Am I working hard? Am I giving a lot of effort into this thing that I'm excited about? 
And so one way of doing this is creating a practice calendar. And it's pretty simple. You take a blank calendar, and every day that you do something small, maybe you sketch for a few minutes, maybe you do a full painting, any day that you are working towards becoming better as an artist, mark off a day on the calendar. And it sounds so simple, but when you go back and you look over the month, maybe you're feeling discouraged. Maybe you haven't painted for a few days. Go back and look at your calendar and you'll see, okay, I've painted all of these days this month. So if I need to give myself a break, if I am feeling down about the results of or how a painting has turned out, I can look back and say, I have worked hard at this and I'm continually showing up and I'm continually practicing and working to get better. And so if we can detach these feelings from the results and move our positive feelings over to the amount of effort that we're giving in our pursuit of becoming the best artist that we can become. Every time that you've chosen to paint, you've taken a small step towards becoming the artist that you wanna be. And so think of each one of these paintings as a step in a very long journey. But here's the interesting thing about the journey is that it never really ends. There's never gonna be a day where you say, I'm finally here, I'm finally a, a great artist, I'm finally the, the artist that I've always wanted to be. Because when you get to a certain point, you're gonna start to notice ways to improve or other things that you're excited about painting. This is not a short-term journey. This is a lifelong endeavor. I think about the artists that I admire and respect the most. They are continually practicing. You would think, what do they have to worry about? They're very successful. Their artwork is brilliant. It, it's inspiring, it's moving to me. What in the world could they be striving for now? But there's no end to the journey. And, and they realize this and they keep working. I know artists that carry around sketch pads and they draw constantly. They're always working to get better. Some very successful artists take workshops with other artists because they want to see things from a different angle and they want to keep pushing and keep improving. And so I don't know if that's encouraging to you or if it's discouraging to you or it's inspiring, but there's never going to be a day where you wake up and you realize that you're there. You're always taking those small steps forward. And so it's, it's really easy to get frustrated with the results of a certain painting, but realize it's a small part of the bigger picture. And the more times that you choose to keep showing up and to keep engaging in painting, the better off that you're gonna be. So yes, I understand. It's, everyone gets discouraged. I get discouraged. You know, you've seen my pile of paintings. I don't like throwing away paintings. I want all my paintings to be successful, but how boring would that be if there was no room for growth anymore? And so try to keep these things in mind as you keep pushing and keep working and keep striving forward as an artist. Every painting is a step forward. Take a step back, give yourself some space to assess your work. You can find the positives and the negatives in every painting and treat each painting as a step as you move forward. And consider creating a practice calendar where you mark off times when you show up and work towards improving. So I hope that these tips are helpful. Learning how to deal with failure is such a big, important part of becoming an artist and continuing to grow. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, How to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've gotten some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. So thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope you found these tips helpful, and I'll see you next time.